Hello and welcome everybody to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and this is the 2252 Mad Dog MD uh, Northern Spirit by Coachman over here. This is an uh, an Asdell couples camper that kind of asked the question, would you rather have homes with a seven foot ceiling or an eight foot ceiling? And I think most people are going to agree you're gonna make it rain on eight foot ceilings if you absolutely can. It just, it, even if you're shorter, it just looks better, it's bigger, it's more open, and that's what this one does. This is basically a double tall camper where it has a taller sidewall plus a vaulted ceiling that makes this one of the most uh, headroom friendly, lightweight trailers you're going to find out there because that's the other uh, crazy thing. This is a surprisingly light trailer given its overall size. And that lends itself to some awesome towability factors and awesome traveling factors. This layout is like almost completely fully travel functional. It's one of the things this layout does very well. But you factor in it has uh, what I call double Asdell walls, where it's Asdell inside and out to keep the weight in check. And there's a bunch of extra fluff stuff that Spirit doesn't just go whole hog on, and it really helps keep the weight and the cost of these surprisingly reasonable because that's the thing you start comparing these and that's where you find out how they're really strong the wide stance stability axles also are a nice little towing feature uh enclosed heated belly walkable roof although it does have a couple funky little uh, hitches in its getting up for instance walkable roof but zero factory ways to get up there to maintain your roof regularly to maintain your factory roof warranty. Now, one of the cool things being a Bish's customer when you choose us is that we can perform an annual RV inspection for you at no cost to you. We also winterize RVs for our customers every year at no cost. There's a bunch of things other than just the RV that you kind of can take advantage of. But in the meantime, let's hop inside and let's see what you know good stuff this one does have to offer. Now, one for the sake of just kind of changing things up, because frankly, I get bored doing the same thing all day, every day. I need to twist it around. And two, because it does this very well. I actually thought I would begin by taking a look at this one with the slide closed in road mode. And what you see here is that 60 by 80 True Queen, fully accessible. You could walk your way around it. And frankly, there's a whole lot of not too awful much that you cannot access in this RV with the slide closed. This is one of the best traveling stop floor plans stay over kind of things you can see now a little pro tip from uncle josh when you're traveling it is not a bad idea to put that table down i know that it has the posts it should keep itself in place but you jiggle bang down the road enough and earthquake this sucker oh well those tables they can they can wiggle loose so i've got the bathroom door open but you see you can get back to the the uh the same i don't think there's any storage you lose access to but shower toilet i mean everything everything that matters for travel stops it's all here but when she's all opened up that's when this one really comes like like it's great you really don't even need to mess with the slide out the rv is fantastic but when you open it up and you start to see like i said that double tall ceiling so the walls are six foot nine and the rv has a vaulted ceiling there's rvs that have either a six foot nine set of walls or RVs that have vaulted ceilings. There's a very slim list of things that are doing both. Uh, that makes us one of the tallest trailers on the, like tallest ceilings per pound you're going to find out there. Because once uh, again, that's kind of the crazy thing with these uh, Coachman Spirit models. Despite their full size, they are very, very lightweight. Um, this is kind of something that uh, was born of the Coachman Freedom Express series. And that being full size but lightweight, that's really like the whole idea behind uh, the the bulk of Coachman's lightweight family lineup. Now over here we got that Insignia TV staring at you straight across from Boardwalk and Park Place. If you take a seat on the uh, sofa where I'm at, one thing that I'll tell you, uh, it is rather tall, and as a result, the ceiling is or, or the TV is mounted rather high. However. That means that we have a good sized TV and an awesome campsite viewing window right here. Uh, not to mention the fact that if you, you sit down here at the sofa, you've just got an amazing little conversation space going on uh, next to the dinette. You may notice all the countertops and tabletops and everything in this are a sealed edge press membrane. Coachman's actually the company that owned the company that created those countertops. Um, as a Forest River subsidiary, you started to see them permeate more into the market. And as they became more and more popular, other manufacturers like all the Thor subsidiaries, if you see sealed edge countertops, they're literally pretty much paying uh, Coachman and Forest River royalties. And Lord, they hate it. <laughs> it's so funny to watch them talk about it. But 
People like them, so they're going to keep doing them. You may notice, too, this is about as easy cleaning as it gets. No floor vents, uh, no carpeting on any walkable space on this. But speaking of carpet, if you look to the left uh, right now, you might actually see a tiny bit of carpet below that sofa. You may also notice how that sofa doesn't actually go all the way down to the floor. There's sort of a faux fascia right there. That's because this is a step-up slide. It's a miniature step-up slide. But the way that they do this, you never really see the step-up. They kind of have everything masked uh, well. Now, it is a Schwintec slide, but it's also a very shallow Schwintec slide, which doesn't give me a whole lot of reason to be super nervous uh, about it overall there. Now, we're going to get to see this thing in all kinds of different forms, functions, and configurations. Uh, real quick, though, one thing I do want to mention, you have a choice between the standard 13,500 BTU and the 15,000 BTU centralized air. Uh, you may also notice they are very willing to flood this thing with a lot of lights. Along with the lighter decor, it lightens and brightens up very, very nicely in here. You may also notice... This RV does have a bedroom privacy curtain. And giving you a look around there, it is rather sheer, I'll say that. At night, if you do have a guest on the uh, seating, it should be, you know, dark and thick enough, essentially. Um, also, you've got that awesome easy lift bed storage uh, kind of configuration going on in this thing. I absolutely love that thing. I do like kind of the Freedom Express version where the storage opens outward, uh, but I, I don't dislike what anything here. I like what they're doing here. Long story short, I'll just leave it at that. You may have also noticed, though, you could sit there, you could use that like a laundry space or the little laundry butt pad you could use as a little pet pad. And you could have a little doggy cat pet palace underneath this thing, which is actually something people ask me all the time. Like, where am I going to keep, you know, the dog pad? Where am I going to keep a cat litter box? This is a camper that may actually help answer that question. And that's kind of one of those things that just isn't well serviced out there in the industry. Now, you may have noticed that is not a true theater seat. They're doing what I call simulated cinema seating with those incliner kickouts that can also bifold down. So it's kind of a sleeper. It's kind of a theater seat, but it's not actually either of those things. And due to the fact that this does have that little bit of a step-up slide, they are just, and the fact that the slide is so shallow, which is helping keep the weight in check, that means that this RV is not really capable of accepting a true theater or hide -a bed Now, if that was a deal breaker for you, first of all, appreciate the fact that I went out of my way to volunteer that information to help you out. Secondly, check the links in the video description. There's about four or five other builders making floor plans like this. And I don't even have them all recorded, uh, but I've got quite a few recorded. And uh, some of them do a hide -a bed Some of them do a theater seat. They all do it a little bit differently. And that is why I just keep making videos, everybody. Um, again, though, I try to share good stuff with bad stuff. Like, you remember Animaniacs? Good idea, bad idea, good idea. Playing flute in a marching band, bad idea. Playing pipe organ in a marching band. If you look down there, you see household and USB outlets. You'll see the same thing on both sides of the bed, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> bad idea? This. This is a cool little wireless charge pad. And maybe this TV just wasn't hung properly, but even if it was, it even if it was mounted so that it wasn't scuffing the wireless charge pad, the wireless charge pad is in the, it's, it's just a bad, it's, it's bad. It's just in a bad, bad place. For me, I feel like it should go up there. To me, that would make a good charging station. And I swear I asked the same thing and said the same thing last year. And evidently, I don't know, maybe Coachman doesn't watch my videos. <laughs> now back here over in the kitchen, um, some people do have, uh, a little bit of a moment of pause considering how close the kitchen is in proximity to the toilet. Some people don't really care for that. I do want to get you over here around the corner and look up and, uh, you can see how there's some power outlets up there. You'll see some additional power outlets above the rear sink with the laminated walls on this. They don't really put any power outlets, uh, at the countertop level or a power tower. Now, speaking of up. If you were to re uh, ask Rick Astley for a copy of the DVD up for Christmas, he would never give it to you because he's never going to give you up. But the irony is that would let you down. And this is what scientists call the Rick Astley paradox, which I think is actually a real thing. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Look, you say what you want. You laugh if you will. That song's a straight banger and you know it. Anyway, moving on. <laughs>
I don't even feel, feel that strongly about it. Anyway, I'm at a funky angle to try to do it. You know what? I'm going to get the, the toilet in, in from a different angle in just a second here. First of all, moving up past that generic plastic sink, we do have a nice rectangular shower. And with that double tall ceiling, we got ourselves a double happy nerd. And this shower actually gives me the exact better angle to record the toilet space in here that I mentioned just a second ago. Now, here's the thing with this toilet space. As you can tell from my face, the space on the left-hand side, it was fantastic. The space on the right-hand side made me a sad panda. But the funny thing is, this has a laminated floor, which means they should pretty much be able to move that toilet if they wanted to. I wish it was just kind of centered up in that space. Now you might notice she's slide awning prepped over there, but one of the things I want to hit on first and foremost as we step outside is taking a second look at those weights and measures and talking about towing. This thing maxes out at about 7,600 pounds and with the length of it, the wide stance stability axles, I think this nicely qualifies for that generalized phrase of half ton towable. Late model tow uh, package half tons, I think we'll find this one comfortably within their, uh, their their capacities. And if there's any owners out there who have some experience that they can share and how they have or have not towed one of these, I'd be all ears on that. Now, as I said before, this is what I call a double Asdell RV as of the 2022 camper season. Uh, Coachman campers, anything that is laminated sidewall like this with aluminum framing has uh, Asdell layering on the outside and the inside. Magnet holdbacks here for some. Uh, you see big baggage doors on both sides, although that vaulted bed system, it does kind of eat into this space a little bit. Uh, just to kind of give you some size references, I grabbed some things here and just kind of shoved them in places. Um, oh gosh, that came out uh, not at all how I wanted it to sound, but ironically, frankly, still pretty much on brand for my little nerdy self. This RV also has something I like to call the polar, a pole holder, or something like that. You've got this extra little shelf and door, uh, essentially built right into this here, that, you know, fishing poles or, you know, the golf club to defend yourself from the gas station murder hobo what come a get you. You got a perfect place to keep all those things. And it's not a big RV, but they did a fantastic job of putting the biggest power awning on this thing they really possibly could have. And again, pretty decent campsite window coverage. Uh, when you're sitting at that sofa, you got a really good look straight across the dinette over that big picture window there. Plus, you can also kind of peek out the bedroom side window uh, as well. Now, the underbelly of these, they are enclosed. They are forced air heated. They are not uh, attempting to be a uh, like seasonal four seasons camp or anything like that. First of all, I despise that phrase. Secondly, they're an extended season model. They don't actually do testing below freezing, but think about this. I, I said this to someone yesterday just to kind of help them understand what they were actually asking for. I said, did you know RVs like this are guaranteed not to freeze all the way down to 32 degrees? And they went, oh wow, that's really good. That's cold. I'm not gonna be camping when it's that cold. I said, you realize that nothing will freeze before 32 degrees. And the light bulb finally went off and they went, oh. They said, you know, I had been told by my friends I had to get a Four Seasons RV. And they didn't know what that meant. They were first timers. And I said, are your friends helping buy it? They said, no. And I said, it's awesome that you have your friends input, but unless they're the ones paying for it and using it, maybe you need to focus on an RV that works best for you. And certain some people, yes, if you're going to be camping when there's snowflakes flying, maybe you want something a little more heavily insulated like the Cougar or Imagine version of it. But I think a lot of us, we don't need all that. Now, as I mentioned before, we do have a walkable roof. They give us no factory allowance to get up there. I'm, I'm almost a little bit shocked they didn't follow suit with like the rest of the industry and just throw one of those telescopic ladder mounts up there. Chances are we could get a rear wall schematic from Coachman and we could probably apply one of those, but factories do not uh, warrant work they didn't do. But once again, we can sort of make that not your problem with the Bish's RV Diamond Club. Basically, whether you buy a new or used RV, it doesn't matter, you become one of our Diamond Club members. You can think of it kind of like a VIP sort of system thing. Anyway, part of that is every year we'll winterize your RV at no cost to you. The other thing, we can perform a, uh, a general surface inspection of the RV for you at no charge. So if you need someone to get up there and check the seals, that's something we can do 
so you don't have to. It's like scrubbing bubbles. We do the work so you don't have to. Now, because they didn't give us a frickin' frackin' ladder or any sort of, um, you know, mount system, I had to climb up on the cougar next door, but at least I can give you some look at the roof and the newly improved solar package on these. Last year, they had like this little 10 amp charge controller and a 100 watt solar panel that maxed the controller out. This year, it's a 30 watt controller and a 200 watt factory package. What that all means in English, you have twice the base solar, you have a better controller, and the controller can handle more solar if you feel like adding it to this. Probably four, five, maybe 600 watts. It depends on the exact specs on the controller. I'm not an electrical engineer genius on that stuff. Long story short, they are at least twice, if not three or four times capable uh, from the solar perspective and battery tending perspective than they were last year. Now, one of the coolest things about having a very wide lineup like we do is when more than one manufacturer makes a layout. And at this point, like Grand Design came out with this in their Imagine series. They said, let's take a motorhome layout and slap it into a towable RV and it's awesome. And since then, everybody and their brother says, I want me a slice of that. And now there's tons of people to build this. So how do you know which one's the best or best for you? Because there is not just a single best one. Check the links in the video description. I have video tours of like four or five different versions of floor plans like this now. You can cross compare while you're right there all in one spot. And then you tell me, who do you think does this layout best overall? And why do you feel that way? And in the meantime, if you're new with us, hit that subscribe button. And if you've returned, hit that like button. Let me know I'm doing a good job or just leave me a little note that says, keep it up, nerd. <laughs> and take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.